Yeah, right on. So we'll start out by saying that head removal on a modern four-cylinder engine is not an easy job. It's probably what I'd call a, a heavy to a very heavy. You should have some experience and uh, not something to jump into lightly. There's a lot going on in a small area with these four-cylinder engines. Just like any major engine job, you start with peripheral removals. Take off your your um, intake tube from the air box to the intake manifold. Then proceed to take off all your connections and electrical bits and pieces. This These engines here have uh, one harness. It was huge, massive. It went all the way around the engine compartment. All these clips and uh, connectors. So Probably 15 or more clips. Eh? Yeah, there is. Yeah. So take all that off carefully and then... Um, we did it in such a way that we could move this harness either to the back of the engine or we could move it, I'm not going to do it now, but we can move it to the front depending on where we needed to work. So get your air, uh, air duct, all your wiring out of the way. So the deal with the fuel line is it's not a standard connection style uh, with, with the tangs that engage. It's got this rib here. It does have the tangs. It does have the tangs inside this female piece, but this rib that's on the male piece will not allow you to take a typical uh, quick disconnect tool that that fits over and slides in to disengage those tangs. Mm. We we uh, tried to do it. We fought with that for a long time. Then we were we tempted to use side cutters at one point. Yeah, bam. <laughs> but of course we didn't do that. So if you look. 12 inches down the line, there's actually a finger actuated quick connect. It was actually covered by a bracket, a 90 degree bracket that held that. Yep. Held that connector and wherever the other end is. Comes from the fuel tank. Yeah. Anyway, it's a steel line, vertical. You'll see it coming up. Yeah. And um, just use your fingers to squeeze together. The yellow, uh, the yellow tabs, and that fuel line will pop right off. Then we removed the front intake manifold. That that came off. Any problems with that? Any coolant lines you had to take off? Mm, yeah, there was two coolant lines up here. Okay. Two coolant lines that uh, went into the throttle. I'll call it the throttle body. Okay. Yep. Did you, you drain the coolant down off. before you did this job? Yeah, sorry. So before you start, drain the coolant. Now on these, it's very easy. And we did. I did this the hard way the first time, but the second time we did it. There's a little uh, on these drain. engines. Yeah, there's a little drain yeah. right here. You open it up, and then there's actually a cutout in the body mm -hmm. to go straight down to the drain pan. That's obviously in the driver's side, the bottom driver's side of the rad yeah. facing the engine. There's a little black plug that unscrews. Okay. Yep. So you drain your coolant and then uh, start taking, removing the peripherals. Yep. Intake manifold wasn't much of a problem. Um, after that, we took the valve cover off uh, while we did our testing. Uh, left the spark plugs in to, so that you don't lose it uh, have any debris in the engine another tip on the front always i like to plug any holes that are going into a critical part of the engine these are the intake ports uh, just put some rags in there i got paper towel stuffed in them so the next thing we did was took the exhaust manifold off so that's usually tricky bolts can be bad uh, spray them down first just usual good mechanical practice and some of the studs came out and some of the nuts came off right correct or, or did all the studs come out no we had uh, all but one stud came out only one nut came off of a, a stud so we had the studs come out and uh, we didn't actually remove the intake manifold we just undid the studs I don't know if you get a shot manifold. of this or not yeah on the exhaust manifold we just removed the studs and the bolts see how I can move that so our intention is to uh, pull that back or tie that exhaust back when we when we take the head off so that we don't have to deal with these crusty dirty uh, Manifold connections down below, right? So if you can get away with that and you also had to take the heat shield off back there, right? Yeah, heat shield had to come off prior to the uh, exhaust manifold 
little quick tip on that. We didn't want to take the, to get the exhaust manifold off, it looked like you may have had to remove the O2 sensor or unplug the O2 sensor uh, harness. That would have been another way I tried. Yep. Um, but instead of doing that, this heat shield, we just use, use snips and cut a piece out of it there. Uh, we're kind of debating whether to even put the darn thing back on because it's so rotten off and it was rattling around near the bottom anyway. Yeah. But that's a way we could take the heat shield out of the way so we had better access to the studs and we didn't have to disturb the O2 sensor. Mm -hmm. If it was a new vehicle, you'd obviously just carefully unbolt the heat shield and not have any issues there, but this isn't that kind this of vehicle. This isn't new, no, it's an yeah. 05. So that takes care of your exhaust, yeah. where we left that in place again. And now, uh, before we take the front cover off, there's a whole bunch of things you need to remove here. You've got an alternator, you've got a water pump, You've got a power steering pump, and you've got uh, your crank pulley. So you have to take all that stuff off. There's a big motor mount here as well. you got to support the engine from underneath. Yeah, and one got you for the motor mount. We didn't have the best lighting, I guess, when we were taking the motor mount out. There are one, two, and three bolts. A bolt that was hidden up underneath this, uh, this reservoir, the power steering reservoir. I didn't notice it at first. Um, so just make sure you get all three bolts from that motor mount. And, and the other thing, too, we spent a lot of time staring at this project wondering do we really have to take the alternator off yes you do do we really have to take the water pump off yes you do do you really have to pay, take the power steering pump off all of us yeah yes, yes you do <laughs> so don't waste time staring at it like we did just take all of those things off and the cover will come off in a much easier way yeah uh, they're they're required there's an interference so you can't remove the cover without removing yeah. all of those things that were just said we had a real the worst part of this whole job by far the bolts that hold the power steering pump to the block via the cover they go through the cover and into the block they were horrible they were seized in and uh they they would not come out what what how, we were finally successful with using a combination of heat on the we had all the bolts come out sorry there was one that was super bad we used a combination of heat uh torsion and a air chisel uh yeah here's the air chisel that we use so this was rattling away at the uh the end of the bolt where the nut is which i can't find it's all right anyway yeah and it was kind of a at one point, there were three of us all doing a piece. One part with the air chisel hammering on the end of the bolt. One person reaching down from behind the exhaust manifold with a ratchet trying to pull, trying to rotate the bolt. And another guy there to just encourage the other two. <laughs> so, uh, so that was quite the challenge. Um, just to let you know, um, we wondered whether the power steering pulley has to get pulled off of the power steering shaft in order to get access to those bolts. And uh, so you don't have to take the pulley off of the shaft. Um, you just have to rotate the pulley because there are big uh, holes in the pulley when you look at it end on. So we rotated it just to expose the, uh, the, the bolts and nuts. And uh, I think there was one bolt and two nuts that we had to take off. Um, once we got the nuts freed up, uh, the top bolt came out without too much difficulty, quite a long bolt, like this long, three, three and a half inches. The bottom bolt, as uh, Troy said, was seized solid in there. We, uh, we heated it from a couple of places underneath the propane torch. I, I think just all of the, all of the efforts with the torch and the, uh, the rattle, the rattle gun or the air chisel and uh, trying to rotate with an air, with a ratchet at the same time, all of that together and some penetrating fluid is what it took to get that power steering pump off. So take your time and don't just wail on those bolts with a drift or a, a punch because you may end up shattering the cover. It's just a thin aluminum ear that's on the cover and on the there's another one on the block. Um, you definitely don't want to get too excited with that. And uh, so take your time on that one. What else? Uh, yeah, so after the, all those things were removed, uh, uh, you remove all your cover bolts just re look around and make sure you get them all some of them are hiding uh, there's a bad one down in this uh, lower corner okay and a bad one up in here in this lower corner just make sure you see them all yeah uh, once they're gone 
there's before that you did you have to take the harmonic bouncer off at yep. that stage yeah okay. yeah that's what was with all the peripherals so that came off fairly easy uh we had to have to use a puller but it was really light force well tip for you when you're taking the harmonic balancer off um it is a regular thread so clockwise goes tighter and counterclockwise goes looser i i would encourage you to use an impact gun whenever possible an air impact gun especially um it that bolt will come off very easy with an impact gun but you'll work at that if you don't have an air powered gun um, because the engine will spin when you turn that backwards if the bolt bites uh, that will likely turn the engine whereas the impact gun spins it so fast the impacts are so fast uh, there's enough inertia in the in the uh, engine components that uh, the bolt will come out so if you have access to an air gun that's the way to go yeah and not only will it turn the engine it will turn it the wrong way there's mixed opinions on that but it's not something that i like to do so mm -hmm. yeah impact gun gets rid of all that yeah and and there's actually a trick for tightening it tightening it to the right torque and we'll show you that when we assemble uh you tighten it with an impact gun but we'll we'll get there we'll cross the bridge when we get there so harmonic balancer comes off if you're not removing the head and you're just going to do maybe you need the front cover off to do the water pump or some other reason there's uh you should turn your harmonic balancer to top dead center there's marks on it on the pulley there's a little tick there's a mark right there so that that is supposed to line up with a mark on the cover um, that gives you top dead center probably number one um, and that will line up all your timing okay yeah so that uh, if you are taking a chain off or disturbing something on the timing synchronization it'll all be set where it's supposed to be um, so back to the cover after you get all your bolts off the, um, you got to knock your cover off we did that with um, some prying there's some little ears in a couple of locations around the cover you can pry there maybe some gentle knocks on on the ears with a uh, wooden drift yeah that was required because we had some dowels right mm -hmm. there's a dowel right up here underneath where the alternator would have gone and then another one in the back above where the power steering pump is yeah. and those get corroded pretty pretty heavy and really bind on to the cover if you just pried on the cover at the top where the prying ears are you might fracture the cover um, and so it just pays to just wiggle at the ears and then find it where those dowels are and then tap right at the dowels um, don't use a slotted screwdriver to drive between the covers at this direction do not do that because mm -hmm. then you'll score these aluminum surfaces and then never seal right even even some sealant may have trouble fixing a mistake like that instead um, look for parts where the cover protrudes over the block and it gives you an interface where you could actually pound at it at this angle um, and we used uh, I think we just tapped on the ears because they stuck out far enough. But if you really want to get a, get something on there, use a piece of wood or something like that and uh, and tap on it. It didn't take any big drama to get that cover off. Now this one is a variable valve timing. It's a 1.8 liter Toyota. They use this in the Pontiac Vibe, Toyota Matrix, Toyota Corolla for a certain spread of years. Uh, with that setup, you have uh, down on the front. So we have removed the front cover of the engine. And this is where you'd have um your chain so there's not a timing belt as on some four-cylinder engines overhead cam it's timing chain on these and there's guides they're removed here uh, we'll show them in another video uh, what it looks like put all put back but we're going to replace the chain it didn't need to be replaced and they do say uh, actually this is a good point these chains a lot of times will be called maintenance free i have read and I have personal experience with these chains actually failing. What happens is they stretch and there's a tensioner down here. So the chain runs, there's a sprocket on the crankshaft, runs up over the, the two camshaft sprockets and then back down. There's some big long guides. Then there's a tensioner here. It's, it, it's an auto adjusting thing. So as the chain stretches, it will take up the slack and just put the right amount of tension on it. What happens is the chains will stretch so much that the tensioner can't keep tension anymore because it's all the way extended. And then you can risk jumping timing. And that actually happened on uh, a vehicle that I worked on and it had jumped timing. It was a supposed maintenance free chain. So anyway, I encourage if you are 
this deep into something and you do have the front cover off, for the money, it's well worth putting a new chain on. And then you don't have to worry about that. So, okay, back to how we progress with this job. So um, the next step will be taking the head off and uh, we're gonna cover that in another video.